Hi everyone. Let's finish chapter two. Now that you grasp how important it is to understand your purpose and to analyze your audience, let's talk about some ways to adapt or tailor your message to your audience for the greatest impact. Jump to section 2-4. One way to impact the audience positively is to include clear audience benefits. More on this in chapter eight. Even in a routine message, the audience wants to know what's in it for me. When we get to persuasive messages in chapter eight, you'll see how critical reader benefit is. You can get a glimpse of this by reviewing section 2-4. Next, you want to learn how to use you view. Remember, we've already talked briefly about and you've read about how business communication is audience focused rather than sender focused. And you can see here in section 2-4a just how different audience focus is. Now go to section 2-4b on cultivating UView. For you view, consider how you start the message. For example, when asking someone for information about something, which is better? Do you start the message with, I would like some information about X, or do you start with, would you please give me some information about X? Which one draws the reader, the you, into the message. Obviously, the one that literally starts with you. Of course, in bad news messages, how we use you is critical so we don't offend the reader. We'll come back to this in chapter 7. For now, look at the examples in section 2-4b. In addition, we want our messages to be professional yet conversational. Avoid such things as contractions, slang, and texting shortcuts in order to appear professional, especially when writing to outside readers, people outside of your organization. Pause the video for a moment and write down why you think using contractions or slang is inappropriate in many messages. But go beyond simply stating that it's more professional. Really think about it. Okay, now take a look at figure 2.6. Pay attention to the middle column. Then scroll down and look at the examples of unprofessional and professional language. 
and overly formal and conversational language. Think about which of these would come across better, which would be easier to understand, keeping in mind again your audience. Next, in all messages, even bad news messages, use positive or at least neutral language. Avoid using negative language, including negative words and words with negative connotations. This will be a challenge in Chapter 7, Bad News Messages, but you must learn to do this. It's not being deceptive, it's being empathetic and sincere. Take a look at these examples. Section 2-5C is critical, especially in today's culture. Avoid bias of any kind, including gender, age, race, color, and more. Instead of fireman, use firefighter. Instead of Hispanic sales manager, simply use sales manager. Also, use plain, familiar language. Make sure everyone in your audience will understand you. Review section 2-5D. Avoid things such as jargon. Use precise words instead of as soon as possible given actual time. These are basic key ideas for planning messages. The book has much more detail and many more examples, so read and review the chapter. If you have questions, post them in the general class discussion board. That wraps up chapter two.